On today's show, we install and review the GTI brake pedal spring for the Logitech G27. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Sean Cole, and today we're here for yet another modification to the Logitech G25 or G27 pedals. They are very similar pedal sets. I'm not going to go into the differences, but the part that we're going to be touching today is the same. And the reason we're doing yet another mod for this pedal set is this is probably the most popular pedal set out there. The G25, G27 were very, very successful wheels. A lot of them out there. And despite that popularity, the pedal set is a little uh, simplistic, I'm going to say. It works functionally. It works great. But there is some desired effect to be had, especially out of the brake pedal. So today we are going to be featuring a new product. I have it here still in its envelope. And this comes to us. This is the GTI. And I point to my I because it's G-T-E-Y-E. -E. The GTI brake pedal modification for the Logitech. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up. And there you go. Um, and what it, this is, it's a progressive spring. So inside, when we get into installing this, you'll see the difference between this and the stock spring. But right here, let me go ahead and open it up one more layer so we can really get a good look at it. And what a progressive spring is, is a spring that has different rates built into it. I mean, any spring, like on a pen clicker or anything, is gonna have a certain amount of tension. And generally speaking, they have the same kind of tension. Now what this one has, and you can see that it's a little looser coils on this end, and it gets very tightened up on this end. And that means that when you first start pressing, this part here has less tension, less spring strength to it, and it will start to move quicker than the other. Um, or maybe it's the other way around. Um, but one of these, uh, the, the one side is a different rate than the other side. So you're gonna find it has two different levels of movement or takes different energy to move one part of the spring versus the other. So, and that's a lot more complex, a lot more engineering behind that than what you're gonna see inside of here. Another thing I'd like to mention is we have covered a lot of different mods for the G25 pedals or G27 pedals. Uh, starting off with like the Nixum mod, which you know might even begin out at about 30 bucks. We've covered the Perfect Pedal mod, which goes for, gosh, about $300. So there are a lot of different variations and uh, price points. This one is along the lines of the Nixum, and it comes in at $29.95, including shipping. So despite coming from Australia, shipping is included. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to go in. We've done this so many times on the show, I don't wanna take a lot of time showing you how to tear this apart. So I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly, uh, but I will show you some of the important things. And it basically all starts with a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench, where you can just remove all three faces. And so let's go ahead and do that. This is not a hard thing to do. I believe the count is 14. These silver screws, those are the screws that are actually holding the cover on. So we wanna remove all of those. Another thing I wanna point out is, there are actually two more hidden underneath the carpet gripper that we're gonna have to deal with. And if the carpet gripper's down, it completely covers it. So you're gonna need to lift the carpet gripper up and then it's gonna be hard to see, but right there between the gripper, this little gap there, there are two silver screws and we're gonna have to remove those as well. And so, I, like I said, 14 of these silver screws none of the black ones from the bottom. Now we are completely free. So one thing about this part of the process, this is the most important part of all. This wire goes along inside and it's very delicate. And when we lift these up, you're gonna see that wiring. And it's connected to all that stuff in there. So you wanna be very careful in the way you remove the cover. And also wanna be careful with what you do with the cover once it's removed. But if you do this, what you can do is remove the cover entirely. So right now we're kind of fighting with the short wires, having it in the way of the workspace that we're trying to work with. And so instead, I can just do that, and this is now free to go. And there are two screws holding that in, right in this spot here. I removed that one, that freed it up. Maybe for some of you, this is the first time you're seeing the inside of a Logitech set of pedals. Pretty simple set. Um, they look real fancy, but ultimately they're very simple. 
This is a kind of a fake spring here going on, or shock. It just looks like a shock. It's really a spring, you'll see. You've got a potentiometer right here, the wiring coming around, and a little uh, action there with uh, uh, two gears. So that's what's turning the potentiometer. Anyway, back to business here. All we have to do to replace the spring is kind of get this thing detached. There are two ways to do that. We could do that from the bottom or the top. Okay, so that's a five millimeter wrench. And then we're just gonna loosen this bottom one. So when I'm pulling this out, it's a little tricky because you get some tension on the spring, but not a lot. So just kind of wiggle it, get it freed up a little bit, and you can get down to business. So I freed up the bottom. You could do the same thing to the top, it's just a matter of what you feel easier. And now you're gonna see what was inside of this. And this is just a simple spring. Nothing too fancy about it at all. And you can see the big difference between the new spring and the old spring. Same diameter, but you can see a completely different spring rate. And that is going to affect the braking. It's gonna give it a little bit of soft feeling and then it's gonna really start to tighten up. Whereas you can see this one here is gonna be consistent all the way through its stroke or push or throw. So let's go ahead and put this in and the world of springs, it really shouldn't matter too much if upside down, right side up. And now you can see what I was talking about, that faux shock look. It's just a cover for a spring and give them credit, it looks kind of cool. I've always liked the look of the pedals. Um, they just function no better than a spring pedal set like we've been doing forever. So now I'm just kind of releasing some of the tension and trying to wiggle all of this back into position, hopefully. It's probably a little easier to remove the top um, than the bottom now that I've done it this way. All right, I think I'm gonna really recommend that people go from the top direction. And there we go. So that was a little tough. Like I said, you could take out the top side and then you're dealing with a brass insert. You have one screw going in this way, it's a tiny Allen, um, and then one going this way. I was a little more obstructed, didn't wanna do that went in through the bottom, which is just one nut and bolt. Uh, either way, would work out the same. This one, you have to be a little trickier though, because I'm f wiggling all this in versus this one, you're gonna be able to set the pedal down easier. Um, either route would get the job done fine, just so you know. And so now let's just tighten it back down. And we're really pretty close to finished with that part. That's all there is to it on the install. There we go, we're snug down. And now we just need to bring our cover back in and work backward from what we did before. Now, one thing I'm gonna show you, right here, you can see these little teeny hooks. That's what holds this wiring right here. And what it does is it keeps you from pinching anything when putting this back together. Um, I've given thought to doing something different myself, and I don't know why they put all that in there. I've given thought, actually, to just kind of gluing or taping all this down into position like this and kind of having it out of the way in my way. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go backward in the directions I followed and do it more like the factory would have. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with trying to get this as close as possible because I don't wanna stretch these wires out and then break anything potentially. And I'm just gonna get this back into place. You heard it kind of pop in. That's that little fatter area. It's kind of the anchor point for that. Get my screwdriver ready. And like I told you, you've got these little hooks. So what I'm gonna be doing here, bringing this into position like so, and then reaching up inside and actually putting the wire into those little hooks. And I am doing this right now just all on feel. Um, so. There you go, and that should do that pretty well. And now the last part is just making sure this seats nicely right here with the wire. A little hole, everything should line up really nice. Trick to flipping it over at this point is to hold onto the pedals because they're securing the base. And I'm gonna just start by getting a couple of the centered holes back in to make sure nothing's gonna come loose on me. 
Uh, this is plastic that we're screwing into. And if you do it very gently, you can feel the screw go right into the same threads that were there. Because what I'm trying not to do is harm any of those plastics. Um, so these screws will go in there really nicely. So we're gonna put all 14 in. I am not overly tightening this. As you saw the way this goes together, this top piece is your heel plate, but it's really just a cover. It's structurally, it's not doing a lot. You don't have to over tighten it. Okay, one, two, that's the final one under the gripper. That is all 14 of the silver ones and this thing is back together right there. Now we just need to put the pedal faces on. You might want to play around with this if you haven't already, but some people like doing left foot braking. So for me, there might be a lot of advantage to putting this gas pedal as far right as I possibly can. That way, it gives me a little bit more difference between my left and right feet if I'm planning on using a left foot braking style. So let's go ahead and try that. So there you go. I've installed the GTI mod. Took me about 10 or 15 minutes. Wasn't very difficult at all. And while doing it, you can see I also changed the stagger of my pedals on the G27, make it a little more comfortable. You can feel there's a totally different feeling to this spring now. So it's probably time for me to get these mounted on the rig and feel how they feel. I'm gonna take a quick break, and when I come back, we'll go over the pros, the cons, and give these a final score. The T500 RS wheel and pedal set from Thrustmaster, officially licensed by Sony in Gran Turismo 5 and designed for the most die-hard racing fans. It has unmatched power and precision, it's backlash free and totally responsive. With this wheel and pedal set, users will go farther than ever before in their racing experience. To find out where to purchase the T500 RS, visit www.thrustmaster.com. Welcome back to my review of the GTI pedal spring modification for the Logitech G27 pedal set. And as you can see from the installation video, it was really easy to do. And how easy it is kind of continues on onto the software end. Really, it's still plug and play. We've made no software changes. Your wheel, your software is gonna really not notice any difference. Now, all the changes are on the mechanical end, which is why I'm gonna recommend that you do recalibrate your wheels because you're probably gonna have a slight difference in travel. So now let's move on to the pros and cons and see how it really worked out in game. And let's start things off with the cons. Now the first con is really not a big deal at all, but we did break the warranty as soon as we opened up our pedal set. Now the Logitech warranty is only good for one year, so it's really not that big a deal because you probably have already had your pedal set for a year or you're not that far out before the warranty is no good. The next con is the spring itself. Now once inside, this won't matter, but when you pull it out of the bag and you feel it, it is a little rough to the finish. There's no paint, and if you read their description of it, they talk about the difference in thickness of paint actually changing the compression of the spring. So there is a reason for it, but it does come off a little on the rough end. Another con is that this is actually an upgrade to the spring itself. And of all of the things we've tested as upgrades to the G27 pedals, this is the lightest spring we've ever tested. And then the last con I have is, there just seems to be a little click in my pedal that didn't used to be there. It's not very noticeable and I can't even make it happen right now, of course, because I'm on camera trying to make it happen. There it is. Oh, there it is. So anyway, there is a little bit of click and I do feel it in my foot, but again, it's not a big deal. Now let's move on to the pros. The first one being, it was very easy to do this installation. Another pro is that it's a stock upgrade. It's mechanical only, no wiring, and the pedals or the wheel won't even know that it's happened. 
And that also means that it's still PS3 compatible. Once again, these are still standard Logitech pedals. Another pro is that it's a very inexpensive upgrade to the pedal set. The next pro is that it is a tremendous upgrade to the stock spring. There is a nice progressive feel. The Achilles heel of the Logitech wheel set was always these pedals and your, your brake pedal really didn't feel much different than your, your gas and your clutch. This is progressive, it's much stronger, and it's a lot easier to nail your points. You're gonna have better wheel lockup prevention and you're gonna have better trail braking sensations. I mean, basically, it comes down to that muscle memory versus travel memory or distance memory. Now, the next pro is something that some of you out there might not consider a pro. And I mentioned, of all the mods we've tested, this is the lightest spring yet. Now, for me, that means it's still sockable. I don't know if that's even a word, but any of you sim racers know what I mean. Maybe you drive barefoot or in your socks. When you get into too heavy duty a pedal, a lot of people like myself immediately start gravitating towards wearing shoes. So that's one thing to consider or keep in mind. Now, with that said, that also means when you go to a really heavy duty pedal set, you're gonna need to hard mount it. Every time we've reviewed a heavy duty mod or a heavy duty pedal set, we talk about hard mounting. This might be the strongest spring you can possibly use without having to ultra hard mount your pedal set. Another pro is that this with its light spring doesn't put too much extra wear and tear on the Logitech pedal set. It's not so much this upper case, it's what's underneath. And when I've gone to the heavy, heavy duty, you start hearing some funny noises from the case of the pedal set. So this is the most minimally evasive. So as you can see, once again, my pros list heavily outweighs my cons list. And therefore on the rev scale, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Now, a lot of you might've heard this and wondered, why are you not giving it a 10 out of 10? And I gotta tell you, with the other competition, especially the Nixum, these two are very closely matched products. And you're really gonna have to listen to the two reviews to figure out which one might be better for you. Now you might get a little bit more for your money out of the Nixum, but again, some of those pros on this set is very specific to this set alone. The GTI brake pedal mod costs $29.95 and that includes shipping anywhere in the world. Right now you can purchase them by going to eBay and searching for GTI, one word, that's one word, GTI, or by the seller name Rally KR. And I have to admit, that whole purchasing through eBay process, I'm gonna put a link here to that eBay link, but who knows how long that'll be there. And when comparing it to the Nixum, that's another thing. You just go to nixum.com, place your order, versus working through eBay is kind of a little uh, inconvenient for someone like me. Now let's move into the final thoughts. This is a great modification. There is no denying that. It is a well-deserved nine, almost 10 by me. And we've really tested a lot of different modifications for this pedal set. And they are hugely different, both in the way they're designed. They're both, they're, a lot of them are hugely different in their pricing. So some of them are designed for guys who wanna wear socks or be barefoot. Some of them are designed for guys who race in real cars and want a pedal that is 120 pounds of pressure. So they really are a little bit of different strokes for different folks. So I hope you like my review of the GTI pedal modification for the Logitech G27. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.